If you didn't know there is a movement in America to regulate the practice of wholesaling houses, this year more states are proposing legislation that would require wholesalers to get a real estate license, and if this trend continues, there could come a day when the no money assignment of contract technique is illegal without a real estate license. So for those of you that are in states that already require a license, and for those of you anticipating that they might soon need a license, on this video, I wanna talk about what it means to be a licensed wholesaler. All that and more coming up. This video is brought to you by Flipster, the nation's number one real estate software with tools for finding, funding, and flipping houses. Check it out now at getflipster.com. If you're new here, my name is Jerry Norton and I make millions of dollars a year flipping houses and I show you how to do the same here on my channel. So if you wanna be a flipping genius like me and live your dream life, subscribe to my channel and watch my videos. First of all, you need to understand that the laws for practicing real estate are governed at the state level. That means each state has their own laws regulating the practice of real estate in their respective states. Each state has a real estate commission and a licensing division. The general rule is that if you receive compensation for participating in a real estate transaction and you are not a principal in that transaction, that is considered brokering and you must have a real estate license. The reason is to protect the consumer from your potentially harmful actions. Now getting compensated for brokering without a license is referred to as an unlicensed commission and is illegal. And that's where wholesaling introduces a gray area. As a wholesaler, when you sign a contract with the seller, you are the buyer on the contract and therefore a principal in the transaction, no license required. As the buyer on the contract, you now have equitable interest. In other words, the contract is an asset that can be sold for consideration. A wholesaler who utilizes the assignment of contract method finds another party, we call a cash buyer, and sells his equitable interest or position in the contract to that cash buyer for a fee. Via an assignment of contract document, the cash buyer is now introduced into the transaction and he becomes a principal. So he clearly doesn't need a real estate license. So does that mean the wholesaler is no longer a principal in the transaction? Well, don't forget, since the wholesaler has equitable interest in the property via his original contract with the seller, he remains a principal in the transaction and theoretically doesn't need a real estate license. At least traditionally, that has been how the laws in most states interpreted the assignment. But in recent years, due to a lot of scrutiny that wholesalers are harming sellers, and due to a big movement by the National Association of Realtors, or NAR, governing bodies are starting to change their laws, stating that the wholesaler who does the assignment of contract forfeits his position as a principal and is therefore brokering between the seller and cash buyer, and as such, is mandated by law to be licensed. For example, the state of Oklahoma changed their legislation last year and now their law states that publicly marketing your equitable interest for sale is considered brokering and you must be licensed to do so. So for example, if you posted your contract for sale on a Facebook group, that would be breaking the law and subject to fines and penalties. So let's explore what it would mean for a wholesaler to get a real estate license. But first, keep in mind, the assignment technique isn't the only way to wholesale. You could choose to double close with that cash buyer. In that regard, you are not assigning your equitable interest. Instead, you purchase the property outright and take title, transacting as a principal and fulfilling your contract with the seller. Then immediately the same day, you resell the property to your predetermined cash buyer. And since you're now transacting as the seller, you are a principal and don't need a license. In other words, the double close technique doesn't fall under brokering and therefore doesn't require a license. The problem is the double close technique is much less favorable than the assignment because you need money to buy the property and you end up paying closing fees as the buyer and again as the seller, depending on what your contract states. If you don't have the money to fund the double closing, there are specialized lenders called transactional funding that will front the money for you. But again, now you pay financing fees, but it is a quick solution to wholesale a property without doing the assignment. 
Now, I'm very concerned by this movement across America to regulate the assignment, and I believe strongly that it's time for the wholesaling industry to unite and organize to be able to fight back. So we created a national association of wholesalers to stand up and have a voice against regulating the assignment. It's really early in its development as of this recording, and it's not yet active, but you can get on the waiting list and pledge your support by going to nrewa.org. Now, the vision is to protect and preserve the assignment and enhance the wholesaling industry. But I'm not disillusioned as to what's going on. As licensing becomes mandatory, there will be a huge demand for wholesalers to double close their transactions. So I created a program where I'll fund my students double closing deals. To learn how it works and get your first transaction funded for free, go to usejerryscash.com to register for a free training. But assuming laws are passed in your state requiring a license to do the assignment, and assuming you don't want to double close and pay all the additional fees, what would it look like to go ahead and get your real estate license? And how would you transact deals as a licensed wholesaler? Now, this is important to understand in order to decide if getting licensed is the right decision for you. And by the way, I am not just a licensed real estate agent, but a licensed real estate broker. So this is an area of expertise for me. And keep in mind, each state governs its own licensing, so a real estate license is only recognized in the state in which it was obtained. Some states offer reciprocity, but you still need to go through the proper steps to get your license activated state by state. Here are the basic steps. First, you have to take a pre-licensing class. Now, this class is to prepare you for the state exam. Each state has requirements as to what the class must provide. For example, some states require the classes 90 hours and other states only require the classes 40 hours. You can Google your state to find a class and either do it in person or online and it will cost you a few hundred dollars. Now the class teaches you everything you need to know to broker real estate transactions. Or in other words, how to be a real estate agent, not necessarily how to wholesale, which seems a little bit off to me, but that's a discussion for another day. Something really important to the state is consumer protection. So a lot of the class covers disclosure and how to avoid discrimination and other important things so that you safely and properly interact with the public. Now, in order to qualify to take the state exam, you must pass the pre-licensing class requirements, including a final test. Then you pay the state some fees, you take the state exam, and if you pass that, the next step is to activate your license, which requires you find a sponsoring broker. Now, a broker holds a higher license and is responsible for the actions of her agents and oversees their transactions, which means she also takes on liability by having agents under her. Now, once that broker agrees to sponsor you, you will pay some more fees to the state and voila, you now have an active real estate license registered in that state. All said and done, it will cost you approximately a thousand, maybe $1,500, give or take, to get your license. To maintain your license, the state requires you do continuing education every year to make sure that you're keeping current with laws and best practices. And so you'll pay for ongoing classes. And if you join the National Association of Realtors or NAR and a local board, and if you sign up for the MLS, it may cost you, let's say another thousand dollars or so a year to maintain your license. But those aren't your only fees for getting a real estate license. Let's talk about the agent broker model real quick. Brokers charge their agents fees for being their broker. The compensation structure between agent and broker is negotiable. However, the most common model that most of the franchise brokerages use, such as Century 21, Keller Williams, and Remax, is to charge a percentage of the agent's commissions on their transactions with an annual cap. So for example, a common split structure is 20% capped at 16,000. So if that were the agent broker split, the first 80,000 in commissions earned for that year, the agent would pay 16,000, which is 20%, to his broker, and then having met his annual cap, he would get to keep everything 100% after that for the rest of the year. Now under that structure, you could see how an agent who does not do any real estate sales and doesn't bring in any revenue to the broker is only a liability. That is very significant as you'll see in a minute. So that is how the agent broker model works, which presents some really big challenges for licensed wholesalers, because think about it. Let's say using the assignment, you wholesale one transaction per month for an average fee of $10,000 per deal. That would be 120,000 in annual wholesale income. 
Before getting your license, you kept 100% of your income, but now that you're licensed, isn't your broker gonna want a cut in your wholesale fees? Is your broker okay that you are transacting and earning money just like his regular agents are that are paying 20% in splits and not pay him? I don't think so. Most brokers are gonna want you to have some type of compensation plan for being your broker, just like his regular agents. And since he's responsible for your transactions, he's gonna to wanna to have some oversight on what you're doing too, just like he does with regular agents. Now, this also opens up another can of worms about compliance, such as paperwork and addendums you use, the disclosures you provide, and so on. Now, you've been trained and licensed to be an agent, but are now transacting as a wholesaler, which is different in a lot of ways. Now, if the state is gonna require licensing to wholesale, which I am against, then at least that license should be specific to wholesaling but that's an argument for another day. I'm actually in the process right now of creating a strategic joint venture with a nationwide wholesaler friendly brokerage that would cater to wholesaling. In other words, I could be your broker. Now, if you think that's a good idea, leave a comment and let me know. Okay, so let me be crystal clear about my position so no one misunderstands me. Here's my position as of this recording, which I'm entitled to change my mind as time goes on and I gather new information. But as of right now, I'd like to organize as an industry and build a powerful association that can lobby to protect the assignment and the best interest of wholesalers from being overregulated. As I mentioned, more states are proposing legislation to mandate licensing to do the assignment. And if we don't do something now, it will be too late. Now, if you agree with proactively protecting wholesaling, go to nrewa.org to pledge your support and get on the waiting list. Currently, there are thousands who have joined the cause. Now, in the meantime, where a license is required, such as Illinois and Oklahoma, and if and when other states enact similar laws, you have two choices. One, pay closing fees and transactional funding fees and double close your wholesale deals. Or two, get your real estate license, pay fees to get it, pay fees to maintain it, and pay fees to your broker for transacting. Both options will cost money and cut into your wholesale profits, but those are your only two options if and when the assignment requires a license. So here's what I'm doing because I'm a flipping genius, and this is what I suggest you do too. Join the movement to protect the assignment, create a relationship with a transactional lender, and or get your real estate license already so you're one step ahead. Do these three things and you'll be prepared. And listen, there's something I've noticed in business and life, successful people don't wait for market changes to happen. They anticipate market changes. They see them coming and are quick to adapt. I, for one, plan on being way ahead of the game and as always, will share my journey with you here on my channel. And finally, if you're working on your first deal, I want you to stop everything you've been doing and watch this next video. I'll show you exactly what to do and best of all, it won't cost you a dime in marketing. So watch that now and if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to my channel. With over 800 videos, this is the number one channel on YouTube for all things flipping and I'll see you on the next video.